We're talking today with National Portrait Gallery Commissioner Dan Okrent. We're here in front of a portrait of a beautiful lady. Can you connect us with this lady and a very important date in 20th century American history, December 5th, 1933? Well, December 5th, 1933 is something that I celebrate as a holiday every year. It's the end of Prohibition. It's the date that, pro that repeal came into effect after nearly 14 years in which alcoholic beverages were illegal in this country. And if you can attribute the end of Prohibition to one single individual, it's this beautiful, intelligent, fabulously wealthy woman, Pauline Morton Sabin. So how did Pauline Morton Sabin help us get the 21st Amendment ratified? She was a woman with a great deal of credibility. She was vastly wealthy. She was the daughter of uh, cabinet secretary, the, an heiress to the Morton Salt fortune. She was married to a J.P. Morgan partner. But more than that, she was a, a, an early political activist. 1920, shortly after the, the uh, women's suffrage amendment is passed, she becomes the first woman member of the Republican National Committee. She founded the Women's National Republican Club, and she was a very prominent figure in national politics. But around 1927, 1928, she came to realize that prohibition, which was something that she had not uh, particularly opposed and thought that might have some virtues, she had come to the opinion that it was a failure and that it needed to come to an end. So she founded an organization called the Women's Organization for National Prohibition Reform, which became a marching army of over a million women who fought to bring about the end of prohibition. And her credibility made that possible. She was connected at every possible level. And one of the, the things that, that enabled her to turn the women of America against prohibition uh, was her social stature. Uh, in 1932, 1931, 1932, she and friends in the organization, other aristocratic women from New York, went on a tour of the South. And they would show up in towns like Charleston and Atlanta, and they would have a banquet to talk about why prohibition should end. And all the junior league women in these towns would show up to be with Mrs. Sabin. And the story was covered both on the society pages and on the front page. She made it respectable to oppose prohibition. You were telling us she didn't start out with that same position. She began as, uh, if not a prohibitionist, then someone who accepted prohibition. She, she accepted prohibition. She thought it might be a good idea because she saw the problems that liquor had caused in our society. Americans drank way, way more back then than they do now. Uh, but she came around 1927 to 19, around 1928 to realize, A, that it was a failure, and B, that it was really corrupting in a way that uh, upset her relating to her own sons. She had two uh, teenage sons, and she was very concerned that they were growing up in a world in which the law said one thing and people's behavior said another thing. And she said, how can they possibly have respect for law, have respect for the democracy even, if they're going to see all of this depredation going on around them in violation of the law? And that's when she determined that she would work to br bring about the end of prohibition. Of course, Prohibition yielded all sorts of stories, and, and W.C. Fields is one of the eminently quotable folks who experienced those, those very dry days. However, you were telling us a very interesting story about a wall in her home. She had, uh, in Southampton on Long Island, uh, a playground of the rich, one of the very largest homes in the nation, probably, but certainly in Southampton. Uh, and in one of her drawing rooms, there was a wall, it was a library wall that moved aside and behind it was the bar. It was not uncommon for people to do this, uh, particularly wealthy people. It was legal to drink in your own home if it was liquor you had acquired before January 16, 1920. Well, who had the money to acquire it and save it and who had the space to store it but the wealthy? And this was quite common where people would drink throughout Prohibition entirely legally within the walls of their own homes. Very good. Thank you for talking with us today about this. I'll talk about her anytime.